Alright, today we're going to take a look at how to replace an optical sensor. It's a timing trigger on an outboard motor. First thing we did was hooked up our water and I'm going to run the engine real quick and let you see uh, how it's missing and shaking. Uh, we've kind of eliminated uh, that it's a fuel problem and uh, narrowed it down to electrical problems so we're going to change the optical sensor. All right, you see I've taken off the motor cover. I wanted to do a little bit more troubleshooting. I'm gonna go ahead and replace the optical sensor uh, first. And then I have also gotten a power pack. So you may be watching one of two videos. I'm making uh, the first video on changing the optical sensor and the second one on changing the power pack. Um, but I wanted to make sure it wasn't a bad temperature sensor. Here, you can see the temperature sensor on this head. The brown wire is for the uh, temperature which will set the motor into a, uh, a rough uh, running pattern so that you don't damage the engine and will also trigger an alarm at the uh, at the dash. The white wire uh, turns off the quick start. Quick start is um, for a cold engine or, or for a new start it puts a little more fuel in there it also makes it run rough but it ups the idle a little bit until uh, uh, the engine warms up enough and then it shuts itself off. It's kind of like a choke and it occurred to me that it could be uh, a quick start problem too. So I just... Alright, we're gonna go ahead and do a test on the quick stop. And the way we're gonna do that is by grounding out the white wire which is on this side so I'm placing in the wire and hopefully this is screwed into the head so That should give us ground long enough to, uh, what we're trying to do is ground out the quick start and if the engine runs right now, that means that the quick start, it, the quick start is stuck on because this temperature sensor is not operating correctly. Um, if it continues to miss, then we know for sure it's not the quick stop. these results. Let's try again now.
All right, so that was kind of interesting. The quick start is stuck in the on position. When I ground it out, it did change the way the motor runs, so that turned off the quick start, yet the motor was not able to stay running. Boy, I hate it when it appears to be multiple problems. <laughs> I think we're going to stick with our original plan, change the optical sensor first in one video set and the power pack in the second video. All right, optical sensor is located under this uh, cover. So we're gonna remove that. It looks like three Phillips head screws. Which are quite hot. All right, underneath the cover, you can see here, there's kind of a protecting plastic cover. Here's our new optical sensor, happens to be blue, and the old one is attached to this bracket. So we need to remove this cover. I have a half inch socket. I'm gonna be very careful to make sure I'll take this off so that it goes on exactly the same way. Currently the arrow is pointing right at the number two. I would assume it can only go on one way, but I'm just going to make a mental note. Number number two. Huh. Well, it's interesting. You notice that the, the optical sensor is actually bolted from the bottom meaning I will have to remove this whole assembly too. And there is a keyway in place so that this timing wheel dust cover can only go on one way. All right, I don't want to lose this spring, so I'm going to undo that so it's not under tension. And let's see what's holding this in. Looks like two screws here and these lips right here. So we'll remove these. The thing about videoing while you're doing a job like this is that you can always rewind the video in case you forget how something went together. Gotta love plastic parts. Alright, let's see if we're free. Here we go. I'm not going to go too far with it. I'm going to go ahead and just remove it right here. good when you're dealing with plastic parts to kind of make a mental note of how tight screws are as you're removing them. You don't want to tighten things up more than what they are. Strip plastic pieces and that's all she wrote. All right, have them both secured now. Remember this piece went upside down. I happen to have a little bit of silicone lubricant. 
I believe I read somewhere that this should be lubricated, so we're just gonna put just a dab in here. I don't want to put too much that it would actually splatter around or cause any kind of problems, but we do want that to move freely and smooth. There you can see our spring came loose. Reattach that spring. sensor it doesn't look dirty or anything but your the uh, dealer has a special piece of equipment to test it which we don't have Assembly of the components. Put the retaining rings back on. Careful not to lose any screws. Got them all started by hand. If you ever strip a plastic screw or screw in plastic, <laughs> you know the importance of that. Again, I'm not going to put too much tension on here. So everything's moving freely. Yep, looks good so far. Place our little timing wheel. It's got a keyway in there, so it can only go one way. But remember, the number two is on this side. Torque setting for this, and I don't know it offhand, but you should probably check the torque setting. Okay, optical sense. All right, well, that kind of stinks. In the meantime, the camera shut down due to overheating. So I don't know how much of that repair you actually got to see, but I've changed the switch and put everything back on. I'm not going to take it off, but uh, I will check it inside once I uh, do the editing on the final video. And I'll take a look and see uh, what's missing and I'll try to fill in the blanks if any. Uh, maybe with some text some instructions or 
with audio uh, once I get to that point. I'll put some of that dielectric silicone grease on these connectors that I'm reattaching. We basically ruled out that none of this was the issue, so. Put these all back together. Fire it up. Let's see if we got a winner. If we don't, we'll have to move on to changing the power pack, which we're probably gonna do anyway. All right, so just a quick note, the optical sensor has been changed. Hopefully, uh, a lot of that was caught on video. Apparently, that HD camera does not like direct sunlight. It overheated in the process, so we didn't get the whole uh, procedure. But hopefully, enough was caught on tape that you'll get the gist of how to unscrew it, mount it, and replace the parts in reverse order. They crank up the engine a minute ago. I don't know how much of that got caught either because the camera overheated. I'll put it back in the garage in the shade. Um, and we still have the same mist going on, so uh, that's how you change an optical sensor. I do know now that I have a spare optical sensor should I ever have to replace that on the water or, uh, you know, uh, in the future, I have a good backup. Uh, the next step we're going to do is undo this panel right here, gain access to the coils and the power pack, and uh, swap out the power pack. That'll be in the next video. So, thanks for watching How to Change an Optical Sensor. If you have any questions uh, or want me to test anything out, just leave a comment below. Like the video if it helped you. And uh, thanks for watching.